Now we want to talk about circuits. So the first thing you should be able to do is read a circuit diagram, right? The main components and circuit diagrams can get very, very complicated, especially if you're going to um, some kind of engineering field like electrical engineering, computer engineering, or something like that. Um, for our purposes and for the MCAT's purposes, we're going to keep it very, very simple with the circuits. Um, the only uh, components a circuit will have would be some kind of battery or voltage source, a resistor, and a capacitor, and possibly um, some kind of voltmeter, right, just to measure the voltage. Okay, and um, here I've drawn, or I've included a picture where this is a resistor. This is what it looks like. It's a squiggly line like this. Then this is what a capacitor looks like. It looks like a plate, right? Looks like that. That's how you know it's a capacitor. Um, and then you also have a battery, which can look like this here. This is a um, battery. This is a specific type of battery. I believe this is a AC DC battery, but most batteries or voltage sources that you'll see will actually look like this. Right, and I've drawn it and I've included it here. Right, um, this is what a battery will look like, but all batteries will have um, a voltage next to them like this. So for example, 10 volts, 20 volts, 30 volts, whatever. This is important to know um, what each component of a circuit looks like. Right, and like I mentioned, these are the only components we'll be looking at um, here. And a voltmeter, actually, I'll show you, looks like this. So if we had this circuit, and then it would look like this, then it should have a circle here, and it should say like a V here. Right, and that's what the voltmeter would look like, and it would check the voltage in between this area, or the voltage drop, I should say, between that area, the difference in the voltage between these two points, right? But other than that, there shouldn't really um, be any other di um, any components you should uh, have. Um, they, may, um, they may have frequency that's more related to, um, that's more related to, like I mentioned, AC-DC batteries. Um, that's, you don't really have to worry too much about that. Um, frequency in terms of circuits, right? Um, that's just something with this picture included as well, right? Because of this specific type of battery, I think. Okay, uh, for our purposes, we're not really gonna be focusing on that. Uh, for our purposes, next we'll be looking at Ohm's law, right? And this is a classic formula that I'm sure you've seen many times in your undergraduate physics um, courses. Um, it's basically, um, it's basically, the fundamental equation you'll use for almost any circuit problems. Almost any circuit problem will require you to use this in some form. And it's uh, V equals IR, voltage equals current over resistance. And you can also easily rearrange this depending on what exact component you're looking for. If you're looking for the voltage, the current, or the resistor, the resistance, uh, you can make it I equals VR, R equals IV, and just rearrange this equation. But the basics is this one, V equals IR, okay? Um, next, I wanna talk about Kirchhoff's law. Uh, this is also a relatively simple one and one we're not gonna cover too in depth, but I just wanna talk about, um, I just wanna talk about it. Uh, Kirchhoff's law is the current in and out of any node is always equal. So for example, here I've drawn this circuit diagram right here and if you imagine this is like a, a wire, like a circuit, this is a node where something splits it, and it started off here. This is I1 is the current running through this one line. I2 is the current running through here. And I3 is the current running through here, right? And then you can do this. I1 equals I2 plus I3, right? Because going into this one point, this one node, all of the current going in must equal the current coming out, right? You can't like just get rid of current or you can't just make current out of nothing. Um, similar, I guess, if you want to think of it, not it's not exactly, but if you want to think of it similar to mass or energy, you can't make it or you can't get rid of it. Um, in a reaction, this is kind of similar. Uh, if you have any node, every, any current that goes in must come out, right? And assuming these two are equal, um, I2 plus I, uh, well, I2 plus I3, 
equal I1, however they may be split up, right? So for example, the current I2 could be greater than the current I3. They don't necessarily have to be equal to each other, but um, when you add them together, they're equal to I1, right? Next, I wanna talk about, and this like, I would honestly recommend just taking a picture of this whole um, screen and then just memorizing everything here, except for maybe um, this, because you don't really have to know. Um, this is more for electrical engineers, but this is not for us. But all of this, this is extremely important. Um, so there's two types of circuits, right? There's series circuits and there's parallel circuits. Series circuits are anything where um, things are wired in series. And the way you know how, if something's wired in series, if it's continuous, right? In one line, so for example, this is a circuit, this square box, this is the battery, right? The current goes like this, travels here through one resistor, then immediately through a second resistor, and then immediately through a third resistor. These three resistors are wired in series because they come one after the other on the same, uh, if you want to think about the line, or on the same wire, right, on the same path. That's what you call being wired in series. Something like this is wired in parallel. And look, if you follow this line, it actually splits here and here, and then again here and here. These three resistors are wired in parallel. They come from one wire that's been split three ways, right? And then they reconverge here and they go here and they reconverge at this node. They split at this node and then they reconverge at this node over here on the bottom, right? This is the difference between being wired in series and parallel. Um, and if they're wired in series and parallel, there's different rules. So for example, um, the voltage, um, in a series circuit, the voltage at um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, um, they're not equal to each other, but rather they add up to make the total voltage that was put in. So for example, if you had a 60 volt bat battery, voltage at resistor one, voltage at resistor two, and voltage at resistor three would all add up to be 60 volts, right? Um, the current, however, is equal at points one, two, and three. Um, and this is, again, if you want to think of it like in Kirchhoff's law sense, um, if this is a node, this is node one, there's one line going in and there's one line going out. If there's one line going in and one line going out, that means both line, the line going in, the line going out must have the same uh, current, right? The current hasn't changed because there's only one going in, one going out, okay? And the resistances are very simple. You just add them together. So to find the total resistance of the circuit, right? Each of these resistors has their own resistance. So for example, this one might be two ohms and we'll cover the units a bit, uh, three ohms and five ohms, right? But the total resistance of the circuit is the, the addition of all of them, the sum of all of them, which in this case is 10. For parallel circuits, it's different. The voltage at each point is the same. So here, here, and here, the voltage is the same. The current, however, is different because again, if you remember um, Kirchhoff's, you had some current going in, but then it was split into three ways, right? Split into this path, this path, and this path, the current, right? So the current at these points sums up to be the current in this one line, but because it was split up, it's not equal. And the resistance is found this way. It's one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 equals one over R total. So for example, if you had something like, if the resistance for all three of them was um, two, so it'd be one half plus one half plus one half, which is equal to three halves. But then because it's one over R total, you actually flip what you get. So it's actually two over three and the total resistance of the circuit is two thirds ohm. Right. So I wanted to actually, based on the definition I gave, I wanted to ask this question about, is this circuit in series parallel to both? Is it neither? Um, so please answer this. Okay. So 78% of people pick um, answer C both, which I'm very happy about. Um, so it actually is both. It's a compound circuit, right? Um, it's a combination of a series circuit and a parallel circuit. If you notice, 
these two resistors are in parallel because you have this one branch node that splits into two nodes, right? So this is in, in parallel. But if you look at both of these combined as one resistor, right? They're actually together in series with this resistor because they're on one line, right? So if you want to do this, and then it gets to this point where you have this whole, um, where you have this whole um, compound, and then you go back to this, right? So it's actually both. How would we work with this, right? Well, we use the same exact rules that we use for anything else, right? First, you would just find the, the total resistance of these two together, as if they were just two uh, resistors in parallel. And then you would just combine that to get a total resistance of this um, combination. And then you just do, um, you'd add that to this in series. Let's give an example. For example, one over 18 plus one over nine, or um, one over nine can be rewritten as uh, two over 18, which is equal to three over 18. And this I'm using um, the, formula for finding total resistance of a parallel circuit, which is one over R1 plus one over R2 equals one over R total, right? So you get three over 18, and then you, um, again, you just flip it, whatever you would do when you add these up, you flip it, so it's 18 over three, or which equals six ohms. So the total resistance of this whole circled area is six ohms. Right, this whole thing together is six ohms. Each one, this one is 18, this one is nine, but together there's six. Now this whole thing together is in series with this one. So what you would do is to find the total resistance of everything, of this, everything, you would now do four ohms plus six ohms equals 10 ohms. Right, and that's because we're using the series um, resistor rule where, which is, um, R1 plus R2 equals R total. R1 is four, R2 is six, R total is 10. Very easy. Take that time. And um, you are gonna have to like, like I mentioned, use like the rules that I gave before, not just for resistance, but for voltage and current as well. Pulling. So uh, the answers are fairly mixed. Um, C had a slight lead and um, correct answer actually is B, um, but it was very mixed, right? It was about 25% um, B, C, uh, D, and um, not sure. Okay, so let's go over it, right? We know that each resistor is two ohms, right? So A, B, and C are all two ohms doing this, and we also know that the voltage, so Vt, V total, is equal to 12 volts, right? First thing I would suggest doing always is finding R total, so R total, right? Because once you find the R total, you already have V total, you'd be able to find the I total, right? Because I total is just um, V equals IR, right? So V, is IR, right? You'll be able to do this to find the I total, and then you can go from there. Um, R total is equal to, first again, these two in parallel, right, to each other, A and B. So RA, um, uh, one over RA plus one over RB is equal to one over R A B, right? One half plus one half because each one is two. One half plus one half is equal to um, one, right? So one ohm, it's equal to one over one. When you flip one over one, it's the one over one. So it's um, R A B is equal to one ohm. And then R A B and R C are in series, right? This whole thing and this little thing are in series. And so you do RC plus 
RAB. And RAB is the parallel, is the combination of these two in parallel, right? We said this one was one. Was one. This we, uh, we know is two. So RT is equal to this, which is equal to three. Twelve, which is V total, equals I total, and then times um, R total, which is equal to three. Um, I total is equal to four. Four amps, right? Well, what did we? What do we know about a, uh, a circuit in parallel? Right, which is what we're looking for. We're looking at the current across resistor B. Resistor B is in parallel with resistor A. We know that IT equals IA plus IB. Right, the, the total current is equal to the current across A plus the current across B, right? Um, no, it, uh, did I make a mistake? I don't, did I make a mistake when I was writing it? Oh, sorry about that. I believe it should be V equals IR. Sorry about that. I need to double check, but I'm pretty confident it's V equals IR. Yeah, it's 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 um it's V equals IR. I'm sorry, th this is a mistake, and I'll fix it right now. I'm really sorry, I made a mistake here. Yeah, it's V equals I times R, right? And I'm not sure, I think these might be also wrong as well then. But it, it's V equals IR, right? Sorry for the confusion. Um, yes, yeah, so where was I? Um, okay. Um, so I believe I was at IT, we mentioned is equal to four. It's also equal to I cross A plus I cross B. Okay. Um, and again, this is Kirikov's law. So you start off, if we're looking at this node, you have one line going in, which is I total, and then it gets split into this node and this node, right? Um, but because these are um, in parallel, it doesn't always have to be this way, but because these are exactly the same, um, same resistance, same everything, um, they're actually just split in half perfectly. So that means IA equals two and IB is also equal to two. That would be the correct answer, B, right? And that's because the um, they all have, they have the same components, which is just one resistor of resistance to ohms. But if, for example, one had a resistance of three ohms, it would not be split evenly. It would be split um, portionally. And um, yes, and the current in C, so I C is equal to I total, right? which is also equal to IA plus IB. So in uh, going across, this one would be um, four. Yes, whoever said that is correct, right? That's because these two, this node, it splits into two, um, to these two paths, but right here, it then reconverges. So two paths go into one path and two plus two equals four. So yes, current across um, C would be four. Um, so the, the current I total equals four. The way we did that is we had a V total. So we used V equals IR. We know what V total is. It's 12 because that's how much the battery was. We found the total resistance, which we calculated to be three ohms, right? And then from there, we just did 12 divided by three to separate I, I and then I is four. I total is four, right? This is total. 
total total.